In this video, we will begin implementing our packet class. If we scroll down to where we were sending data in the client, you'll see that what we were doing is we were calculating the size of the string, converting it to the encoded network byte order. Then we were sending the size of the string, and then we were sending the buffer for the string data. With the current setup we have, we are only able to send strings. This severely limits how our packets could be laid out. What if we wanted to send a packet that had a few integers and then maybe multiple strings inside of it? Well, we wouldn't be able to do that with this current setup. We would just have to turn them all into strings and send them all that way. The packet class that we are creating will allow us to insert and extract data however we want, and it will make sending and receiving data much easier. Let's first create a new header file. We're going to call this packet. We're going to need the winsock header for this, so we will define the win32 lean and mean in winsock. And then we'll also need a vector here, so we'll also include vector. We need to have a buffer where we are going to store all of our bytes for the packet. So we will just have a vector of chars for that. We need a function to clear our packet. We need a function to append bytes to our packet. For now, we're going to go ahead and implement a function to insert and to extract an unsigned 32-bit integer. So this first one is our insertion operator, and this one is our extraction operator. One more thing that we'll need is we'll need a variable to store our extraction offset. The reason that we need the extraction offset is because, let's say that we had two integers inside of our buffer. Now these are both uh, four bytes, so that's why I have them displayed like this. And if we were in big Indian, then this would have the value of one, and this would have the value of two. When we extract the first integer, we will get whatever is at the beginning of the buffer. When we go to extract another integer, we have to have a way to store the extraction offset so that we don't read this integer again. What we would do is we would increment the extraction offset by four bytes since we read four bytes. And now, instead of getting that first integer, we will retrieve the second integer. Let's go ahead and start generating the definitions for these. For our clear function, it'll be pretty basic. We're just going to clear our buffer and set our extraction offset to zero. For append, we will want to append this data to the end of our current buffer. So what we can do is we can call the insert function of our vector. The first argument is where we want to start inserting this data, and we want to insert it at the end of our current buffer. So we will call the end function for that. The next argument is going to be uh, the pointer to where our data starts, and then the last argument is the pointer to where the data ends. These both need to be cast to char pointers. To calculate where the data ends, we will take the pointer to the data when it is cast as a char pointer, and we will add size. Let's take a look at the insertion for a 32-bit integer. The first thing we need to do here is we need to convert this to network byte order, because our packet class should expect all of the data being in a format where it is ready to be sent. So here we are converting it to network byte order. Next, we need to append this to our buffer. So we'll call append, and we'll pass in a pointer to our data, or the address in this case, and then we'll pass in the size of that data. Next, since we are overloading the insertion operator, we just need to return this, and our insertion is done. Next, let's look at the extraction. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and for the end of this function, we will increment the extraction offset because we know at the end of this function, we'll want to adjust it so that the next time we do an extraction, it'll be reading from the correct offset. So we need to find a way to get the bytes from our buffer into this 32-bit integer. We know the pointer where the data is at will be the address of buffer at the extraction offset. What we can do here is we can cast this as a pointer to a 
32-bit unsigned integer, and then we can dereference it. So that looks like this. So here we are casting it to a 32-bit unsigned integer pointer. However, we need to dereference it to get the actual value. We are almost done here, but we must remember to take Indianness into account as well when we extract the integers. So we were storing them in network byte order, so we need to convert it back to host byte order. And that should work for what we need. Next, let's go into our socket header, and we are going to create send and receive functions that will take in our packet as an argument. First, we must include the header. Next, let's create the declarations. Now let's generate these definitions. The first thing we're going to do is determine the total packet size. So what we will do is we will create a 32-bit unsigned integer to store this. We will call this encoded packet size. And we're going to store the packets buffer size. However, we want this to be the encoded packet size because we're going to send this over when we send the packet. So we need to convert this from host to network byte order. Now we'll have the encoded packet size stored in this variable. Next, we're going to send the encoded packet size. So we will call send all. We will pass in the address of the encoded packet size. Next, now that we have sent the size of the packet, we need to send the actual packet's buffer. We can call data to get a const void pointer to the data. And then for number of bytes, we will just pass in packet.buffer.size. Copy and paste our error checking. Then if we get down here, we will return success. Now if we go down to receive, the first thing we're going to do is clear our packet. This will ensure that we don't have any old data inside of it. Now we need to receive the encoded size. So here we are receiving the encoded size, and if we get an error, we will return generic error. Next, we want to store the buffer size. So we're going to get that by calling network to host long on encoded size. Of course, you don't need to make a new variable for this, but I just did this for clarity's sake. Next, we need to receive the data into our packets buffer. So we want to start copying at the beginning of our packet array. So the way that we'll access that is like this. We'll look at the first element of our buffer, and we will look at the address for that. For the number of bytes, we'll pass in buffer size. However, before we do this receive all, we actually need to resize our packet's buffer because otherwise it would not be able to store this data that we're receiving in. Next, we'll just do the same error checking as before. And if we get down here, we will return success. Let's go ahead and give this a test. So we'll go to the server CPP. We're going to take out the old code we had. And now let's go to the client CPP and take out what we had here. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to store uh, three 32-bit unsigned integers, and we're going to put them in a packet and then send that packet. So here we are creating our three variables, just like this, and then we're creating our packet and we are storing them. Alternatively, and you know, if we wanted to store four here, I know A has the value of four, but if we wanted to store four, we could do this. You know, we could cast four to a 32-bit unsigned integer. That'd be the same idea, but for now, I'm just going to use these variables. And now we just need to send the packet. And of course, if it's not successful, we will break out of the while loop. Now let's add the code to our server to receive these three integers. Let's go back to the server. We'll create our three integers. We'll create our packet. What we'll do is for our new connection, we will receive the packet. And then we need to check if it was successful. 
All right, and if we get down here, then we were successful, so we can go ahead and print out these three numbers. Let's go ahead and test this out and see what we get. Oh, one thing I forgot to do was, I guess, I have to initialize these. And then inside of this overload operator, I forgot to put in the return this. One other thing I wasn't even thinking, but after we made that fix in our packet CPP to return this, if we go back to our server, we need to actually extract the values out for A, B, and C. So there we go, we're extracting the first, you know, integer to A, and then B, and then C. Let's go ahead and run this server. And now let's run the client. All right, so you see we see our three integers, four, six, nine. So that's exactly what we would expect. The last thing that we are going to cover in this video is we are going to create our overload operators for sending a string. Let's first create the declarations. So we have our insertion, which we're going to use a const uh, reference of a string. And then for our extraction, we'll just take an a reference of a string. Let's generate these definitions. And let's look at the insertion first. So before I forget, let's go ahead and put return this there. When we want to store a string, we must store two things. First, we need the size of the string, just like how when we sent it over the network before, and then we'll need the actual buffer contents of the string. What we are going to do is we are first going to insert into this packet the size of the string. So we will call it data.size, and make sure that we cast that to a 32-bit unsigned integer. What this will do here is it will actually call our overload that we made before and go ahead and convert it to the proper Indianness and append it to our buffer. Next, we need to append the actual data inside of the string, and it's as easy as calling append. We will call our data function from our string. We could also use our C string function, it doesn't make a difference. And then we have to pass in the size. And that's all that it is for our insertion operator. Now let's look at the extraction operator. For our extraction operator, the first thing that we want to do is clear out the existing contents of whatever string we passed the reference in for here. Next, we need to make a variable to store the string size. Next, we need to extract the string size from this packet. Now we need to resize the string that we're referencing to be able to fit the buffer. Now, there are a few ways that we could copy the data from our buffer into this string. What I'm going to be using is actually something called uh, the assign function inside of our string class. The way that this works is we will pass in a pointer to where the data starts, and then we will pass in the size of the data. We can get this by looking at the address of our buffer at the extraction offset. And then for the size, it will just be string size. Next, we need to make sure that we adjust our extraction offset by however many bytes we just read. Keep in mind, we didn't have to adjust the extraction offset here because our overload up here, where we are extracting a 32-bit integer, already does that for us. The last thing that we have to do is just return this. Now what we can do is we can create a packet that has a combination of integers and strings, but for this example, I'm just going to create a packet that has two strings in it. So we'll have two strings. This is the first string and this is the second string. And then we will send that. So our server has to be adjusted to know that it's accepting two strings. We'll call them string one and string two. And then we will just print out both of those strings after we extract them from the packet. So let's go ahead and test this. We're going to run the server. And next, we are going to run the client. You'll see we get, this is the first string, this is the second string. We're getting them both at the same time. They're coming in the same packet. So we still have a bit of work to do with the packet class. And it might seem like, okay, this is working fine. But there's a few issues, and we're going to address one of them in the next video. There are no sanity checks in here, so we're just assuming that the programmers will never make any errors when they're using the packet class. But what we're going to implement in the next video is a packet exception. 
and that way whenever something happens here that shouldn't, we can throw a packet exception. For example, let's say that our packet only has one string and we try to extract more than one string from it, then we're going to hit a packet exception because we're going to start trying to read bytes that aren't even in the buffer because we're going to pass the buffer on that second read due to where our extraction offset will be. But yeah, that is what we will be covering in the next video.